Hey, so nice to be here and so nice to see everyone out there, albeit virtually. Indeed, hope this finds everyone healthy and well during all of this. My name is David Malin, and if you'd like to follow along with the following slides, let me go ahead and paste into the chat window the URL of these very same slides that are、uh, composed next to me here.、Um, and that URL is also now. On this screen here, cs50.ly slash Zoomtopia. So, I teach a course here at Harvard called CS50, Computer Science 50, which is Harvard's introductory course in computer science for majors and non majors.、Uh, it's available、uh, freely as open courseware on YouTube, on edX, and on other platforms. In fact, if you'd like to take a look, At this particular class and the ways we've been using video over the years, please feel free to visit edX.org slash CS50.、Uh, but in healthier times, a class at,、uh, in CS50 looks a little something like this、uh, a very large classroom on campus. CS50 tends to be、uh, the university's largest class with some 800 students on campus. We also have a collaboration with Yale University, and so we actually have some 300 students down the road in New Haven、uh, as well. And we've long had about 100 to 200 students per semester taking the course through Harvard Extension School, which is the continuing. Ed program of the university. And pre COVID and in healthier times,、um, would we, were we actually using Zoom in some form already? In a nutshell, this introductory course. Uh, is structured along the lines of lectures, wherein I present the week's material and set the stage for the week's homework assignments and the like. But then we also have a team of teaching assistants or teaching fellows who lead what we call sections, otherwise known as recitations, which are much smaller scale classes with maybe 10 to 20 students max instead of all 800 plus all at once. And then we also hold office hours for students, which are one on one opportunities for help. Over the course of the week, with each week's problem sets or homework assignments. So, for the Extension School students, some of whom do live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, but many of whom live elsewhere in the US and also internationally,、um, we've long had a distance education program where we not only film the course's materials, but we also, as best we can, try to hold synchronous experiences for them as well. And so, whereas a student through Harvard Extension School for the past many years might watch the course's lectures online via the web, YouTube, or the like,、um, we've been using for several years now Zoom to approximate. The experience of being in person on campus for these sections and these office hours. So, a teaching assistant through the Extension School will instead use Zoom and convene 10 to 20 or so students at a time in virtual classrooms using Zoom to share their screen, walk students through additional examples, and otherwise teach the course on a smaller scale. Now, early on, Harvard didn't have a site license rolled out campus wide.、Um, we didn't have terribly、uh, many administrative features to, at our disposal as a course. So, we sort of hacked something together.、Um, we, as a course, because we have so Many students and so many teaching assistants wanted to at least try to、uh, standardize students' experience as by configuring the various settings for Zoom in a uniform way, helping the teaching assistants run everything smoothly so that everything would be automatically recorded for them. They don't need to tinker with settings. And so we essentially started creating a lot of accounts like this using very similar email addresses in our own domain, and then configuring all of those accounts、uh, centrally ourselves, and then having the teaching fellows,、uh, teaching assistants log into these accounts. One at a time. And so there was definitely quite a bit of overhead to that, but it was our process of finding our way and figuring out exactly what features of Zoom or any online platform works well for us.、Um, and in fact, more recently, has,、uh, have we gone all in? When it comes to providing students with an experience as proximal to and on campus as we can,、uh, albeit in the virtual space. And so, what I thought I'd do with some of the following pictures、uh, that we'll paint is tell the story of the various setups that we've developed and tried and experimented with over the past several years, both pre COVID and now more recently during,、um, and give you a sense of the possibilities of just how you might recreate an educational experience for students using technology like this, but in a way where ideally the technology starts to get out of the way and students. Students really feel like they're part of that shared experience and they have more than just a window into a classroom. And so, by way of example, first, there's another course that I've long taught. Uh, with some colleagues at Harvard's Business School for the past several years,、uh, known as the Harvard Business Analytics Program. And this is an exec ed program, so not for college students, but it's entirely online. None of the students come to campus for classes. Instead, they might come to campus once or twice total just to convene and to graduate essentially all together. But the experience for these students has long been via Zoom entirely when it comes to synchronous. Section. So, those smaller scale classes, this case not 10 to 20, but about 40 to 60 students,、um, do we convene them weekly? I or a colleague using Zoom to have conversations like this, but much more bi directionally with students' cameras and microphones all on and holding really a discussion that you might have in a physical classroom. We also provide that same demographic of students with pre recorded lectures asynchronously via the web,、uh, via any web based platform,、uh, so that we really focus our time on Zoom together on the discussion of that material and on the interrogation thereof. 
up. So I thought I'd paint a picture now of a few of the setups that we've used for that particular experience and then broaden things ultimately to talk about what we've been doing over the past few months to try to bring at scale the sort of in person experience back to students wherever they happen to be. In the world. So, I dare say the simplest setup we and I personally have used looks a little something like this. This might be what your own、uh, home office or basement currently looks like as well.、Uh, the reams of, numbers of reams of paper might vary, but it's a pretty、uh, makeshift setup indeed,、um, simply to、uh, at least make things a little more pleasant than sitting down at your desk, head down, focused on a tiny little laptop screen, trying to teach a class. And this has certainly been、um, a wonderful option over time. Over the past few years, we've had things like hurricanes. And snowstorms where it was either cancel class or hold class from home via Zoom. And so I myself have done that. On occasion, I've had to travel for conferences or for work more generally.、Um, and it's been amazing to be able to teach class, albeit at a hotel, so long as there's good Wi Fi, as a substitute for otherwise having to reschedule altogether.、Um, but more recently with COVID, have I tried to,、um, with my colleagues here, At Harvard, try to push the envelope at what it means to sort of teach from home. And so, among the setups we've been experimenting with more recently, start to look a little something more like this. So, what you're seeing here is essentially a view of my kitchen, albeit with all the clutter removed. And I thought I'd highlight a few of the features, the hardware that we've introduced to this setup, to try to bring more realism to students' experience and a cleanliness to it. So, it doesn't just look like I'm sitting there at my kitchen counter, but indeed, I'm、um, showing the audience the respect and the engagement that we would hopefully provide to them no less in person. So, I have this white screen、uh, along the back of my setup, a couple of LED lights that are illuminating it, and then in front of me, too, a couple of more lights. And indeed, one of my biggest takeaways, especially having worked with very talented video、uh, colleagues on campus, is just how important good lighting is. And in fact, if I zoom in here at what I'm looking at, too, it's been very important to me pedagogically, and even right now, to stand as much as I can during class and to sort of channel that sort of energy that you might have in person to a virtual experience. And so, I don't, can't really think of any Anytime where I've been taught any classes online via Zoom or otherwise, actually sitting down. And so, this sort of sit to stand desk that you see here that sort of goes up and down based on your height or your comfort、um, is one of the first things I introduced. And then, what I'm looking at when I'm teaching from home via Zoom is quite simply my laptop, but rather than using the built in Mac webcam, which is just so so, there's like a little Logitech webcam instead, which is slightly higher resolution, slight, does,、uh, handles lighting a little better. And so, that just generally provides students with a better view of the material or the content or really the content. Conversation that we're trying to have there、uh, together in class.、Um, but I'll note that、um, along the way,、uh, have we tried to do better than the default view that you might have with any of these online tools where typically your content is simply superimposed and side by side with yourself? So typically in Zoom, for instance, if you share your screen, you can generally share the content really big and then still have yourself in a small tile off to the side, or vice versa, of course. And this honestly has never really resonated with me because you really relegate the teacher、um, to a small corner. The attention is no longer as much on the facial expressions and the sort of visual clues. That, cues that all of us provide when interacting with each other. And we don't need this large of a screen to show, in this case, some, some computer code, this being a computer science class. But it turns out there are mechanisms freely available too, via which you can even marginally improve your own at home or at office setups. You're still using Zoom, but by feeding a slightly customized signal into it, so to speak. And so, for instance, this is the view that I tend to use when teaching from home, whereby it's the exact same hardware and it's the exact same Zoom software. But what I'm using is this. Third party open source tool called OBS or Open Broadcasting Software, which is freely available at this URL. And what it allows you to do is sort of stitch together your own custom layouts, putting yourself over here, your content over here. And you can even have other inputs if you have an iPad or some other tablet device or the like. And so I would encourage you, for instance, to look into tools like that, whether OBS or something else, because I think you can sort of marginally improve students' experience while still using the same building blocks、uh, that you might already be using or your school might. Be providing. So now on campus, in healthier times and also with great social distancing, have we been experimenting with、uh, ex uh, environments, setups that are more immersive for the instructor? Frankly, I would not particularly enjoy professionally teaching from my kitchen all of the time. It's a wonderful substitute, alternative, and sort of workaround、um, as needed. 
But I personally,、uh, what I love is the interactions with students, the QA, and really being able to see as much of the group as possible and not just focus one on one necessarily with small tiles. And so, among the setups we've been working on more recently is what I might describe here as this one TV setup, whereby we have a large screen TV in the office to which we connect my laptop and some other hardware to create an effect that looks a little more like this. So, in healthier times, I might be in a small conference room like this. There's a large, maybe 65 inch TV across a long table. From me. My laptop's still right in front of me, and it's wired ultimately into that TV. But there's a few design features that we aspire to implement in this setup to just make things more compelling, more engaging, more interactive for both the instructor and for the student. And so, for instance, if I zoom in here on the screen, you'll see some of our representative students who partook, for instance, in one such class. But then up here is a teleprompter.、Um, it's sort of a personal pet peeve of mine that really all laptops these days and all webcams ever so slightly get our eye line off. Right now, you're probably seeing me looking right at you because I am literally looking right at the lens of a camera that we have here in front of me. But what I can't see at the moment is my screen, which is down here. And of course, as soon as I look down, now I'm no longer looking at you. And it seems like it's going to be some time before we have cameras smack dab in the middle of our screens or before、uh, artificial intelligence can start to help digitally and alter our eyes. So, one of the things we've experimented with on campus is honestly just putting a small teleprompter in front of the camera. This time, it's no longer a webcam. It might be a A, more, a DSLR or more professional grade camera that's actually on a tripod that can support the weight. But in this way, can I have a screen full of students or the speaker view in Zoom speak、um, right there in front of the lens so that Brian, for instance, a colleague of mine here with whom I was co teaching this class, he and I can look right at each other. And similarly, could a student feel like my attention truly is on them and not off some number of degrees?、Um, it's worth noting, though, too, that in terms of managing a class via Zoom, In our experience, we have taken a different tiered approach to this too. In the most simple case, it is just me in my kitchen or hotel room or office or the like. But I've personally found it quite helpful to collaborate with a colleague, a teaching assistant, who can help manage some of the mechanics of using, uh, web, uh, using、um, a virtualized environment like this. So, case in point, when we have larger classes than just three students, for instance,、um, when the hands go up, there's certain steps that I personally have found、uh, cognitively distracting. When trying to teach a class, it's hard enough for me to keep focused on what did I just say, what do I want to say, and what has the student just said or asked that I personally rather not have to deal with also putting students' hands down or remuting microphones or the like. And undoubtedly, in longer term,、um, software will handle most of these problems for us more automatically. But in the meantime, I often have a colleague or a teaching assistant doing some of the simple things automatically putting a student's hand down once they've asked their question so that they no longer bubble up to the top of my screen and muting students if they might forget or helping to unmute them as needed. So, helping with some of those mechanics when you have the resources or the colleague whom you can lean on. Has definitely been helpful, especially for larger classes for me where my own stress level is a little higher and I don't want to embarrass myself by sort of tinkering with GUIs, graphical user interfaces, as opposed to just being there to teach. So, beyond the one TV setup, we have what's evolved more recently into a three TV setup. The motivation here really just being to make a more immersive teaching environment. So, here you see a, a colleague's rendition of what this setup looks like with three of those larger TVs, the upside of which is that whereas with one TV, you can typically fit some、uh, 49 or fewer students total in a 7x7 seven seven or smaller grid on the screen. Once you introduce three TVs, can you actually have up to、uh, 75 participants total, 25 on each of those screens? Upside being that we no longer have to page left and right when we want to see all of the students in our 40 to 60 student classes.、Um, and in this case, too, if I zoom in on what the experience is like here, we have a, a camera up at the top. Uh, we have my laptop here, for instance, on a small table behind which I would stand. I would be facing, indeed, the single camera that's above the middle screen. And we would configure Zoom in such a way that when a student asks or answers a question, they surface to the middle of that screen. They're enlarged to be a couple of feet tall. So it actually really does feel like we're in a conversation. And because the couple of other TVs are somewhat wrapping around me, does it feel like we're all in a room together and it's not suddenly isolating between just me? And this one participant. There's a little confidence monitor here just so I can adjust myself positionally, especially if I have content to the left or right of me.、Um, and over to the side, too, do we actually use a second monitor connected to a colleague's machine that literally just full screens Zoom's participants window so that when we have a half dozen or more hands up at a time, it's in a big enough font size, I can glance over and I can call on students much more actively. And then a colleague of mine in this case is helping with、uh, Zoom's iPad feature to manage the screen. In a nutshell, 
Shell, um, he'll often help me pin a student on the screen when I want to make sure I'm conversing full screen with that student, and will also help dismiss things like screen sharing or the like. And the key ingredient here, as Ty actually alluded to earlier, and as did Kelsey, is a feature or a different product really called Zoom Rooms. Zoom Rooms is essentially a tool that was the key ingredient to this more immersive experience for us, whereby Zoom Rooms, in a nutshell, allows you to run Zoom on three screens and have the software manage it all for you. We originally tried to approximate this ourselves by having one PC connected to each of these three TVs, and there was just too much overhead. A colleague would like remote desktop into one of the TVs, hit page right on one of them, hit page right, page right on another, so that we would see different. Uh, three different screenfuls of students, but you start to get duplication of tiles and the screens start sort of fighting with one another. And so um, a nice ingredient has been just to use software that's typically used, I gather, for conference rooms in sort of a corporate workplace. But Zoom Rooms has indeed helped um, manage and take away some of the more human needs that we've worked around some of the software challenges otherwise. Um, and underneath this all now is just a single PC that's connected to all three screens via three HDMI cables or the like that really runs all of this, um, in addition to my own laptop being fed in as well. So now, uh, the fall semester is in progress for us at Harvard and elsewhere, surely, at universities and beyond. Um, and we've aspired this current semester to provide our undergraduate students with as real of an experience as we can and to replicate really that feel of being on campus, even though all of Harvard's classes happen to be online. There are some students living on campus, but all classes this year are now being held via Zoom, which means our lectures and our sections and our office hours, which is different from past years where lectures might be in person or on YouTube or the like and only sections and office hours were used, particularly for our extension students. But now everyone is all in on Zoom. And so here is perhaps not a, a setup that we would necessarily recommend for everyone, given the sheer complexity of it, the number of cables, and the amount of experimentation it took for us over the entire summer to sort of figure this out. But this particular semester, we've had the fortune to be in a nice theater on campus. Uh, which is otherwise dormant because of no performances happening. And what we've wanted to create in this experience is still the feel of, the look of, a live lecture that students might otherwise experience when they're there on campus, but also provide me in the reverse direction with the ability to see, to hear, and to interact with students so that we're not just pre recording lectures, so that it really is as bi directional and interactive an experience as it ever was. So if I flip us around here 180 degrees, you'll see what I see in this space. So on the lectern is my laptop as usual, but there's essentially beyond that six large screens, which is on the left one Zoom room setup with up to 75 students at a time. On the right is another Zoom room setup with another 75 students. So out of our course with several hundred students this semester, can I see at any one time some 150 students? And then again, using Zoom room's feature for iPad support, a colleague of mine simply helps me. When I call on one student or another, he'll click a button on the touch screen and voila, they'll be full screened on just one of those TVs. And we've got a single camera uh, just below that TV so that I know to look at that camera. I can therefore approximate the experience of having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that student while still seeing all of the other eyes of the students on me. And we approximate as best we can really the experience of having as live of a class as ever and bringing campus to students even though they couldn't necessarily come to them. So over the past several years, and certainly months, have we fine-tuned a lot of uh, settings. Um, here, for instance, is what my own experience might look like if we zoom in just a little bit. We've gone ahead and documented a lot of these settings. If it might be helpful for you to avoid having to reinvent the wheel, feel free to go to this URL, which is also, again, in the slides whose URL I pasted earlier. And certainly happy to take any questions um, and comments now uh, with Ty and Kelsey. And please do feel free to reach out uh, via email or the like if you have questions about our own approaches here.